Well, it's award season, everybody. And I gotta be honest with you, I could not give two shits, to be honest. I don't really pay attention. You know, I used to value the Oscars, but now I'm just, I just see it as a, a glad, happy chance for all the all the stiffs in Hollywood to pretty much pat themselves on the back and congratulate themselves on how awesome they are and uh and also give out shiny gold dildos to to uh people who I don't I may know. I mean, I know actors and I know all the I know some of the roles that they've done and everything, but honestly, to me it's just gone far too political and I don't like it. Half the time when I watch them, they give awards to stuff that I'm just like, what? What is that? No, there's <laughs> actually like, some I, movies I, I have watched. nothing about that. <laughs> there's some movies I have watched. Like last year, the big winner was The Shape of Water. And I got to be honest, Shape of Water was actually a pretty decent flick. That, was that? That was the Guillermo del Toro yeah, film. I was going to say the del Toro. Yeah. Okay. And, I can and get it, behind that. Yeah. I, I still it, haven't seen that. I keep meaning No, I, I've seen it and it's actually really good. Yeah, I heard it. I mean, good. I mean... I think Doug Jones deserved a. a, Did Doug Jones win an Oscar for that? I thought I felt Doug Jones deserved an Oscar for his performance in that. He had very few lines and just like and just it it was pretty much an Abe Sapien uh, uh, origin story. That's all it was. But I got to be honest, I'm glad Guillermo del Toro's finally got an Oscar to his name. I mean, I know Oscars don't count for much, uh, especially in my mind, but. I love Del Toro. Del Toro is a great the artist. To some people, yeah. Well, it does, yeah, it, it's the most coveted prize in film. It's just me. It's lost its luster over time because instead of it being about uh, what truly is the best film and what really reaches people, instead it's all about what sort of political statement does this film make. Yeah, that's really it anymore. <clears throat> in which I'm just like get the politics out of it you can tell a human story without getting political jesus christ Mm -hmm. all right well uh honest trailers did a uh video on it let's uh let's see what they gotta say here we go It's time once again for the Oscars, who after pissing everyone off by suggesting a new popular film category, pissing everyone off by hiring and or firing Kevin Hart, and that was bullshit by cutting then uncutting important awards from the show. We'll now be pissing everyone off by awarding best picture to one of the following eight nominees. From director Br- uh, from a director comes the combination of uh, Lewis, Dexter Keith, and Mike I, Myers. I forget engine, his last didn't name. Know Freddie Mercury deserved. Well, that's the kind of song teenagers can crank up the volume in their car and bang their heads to. In this lifetime movie, it's one great Rami Malek. That was awesome. From being the non-parody version of Walk Hard: The Dewey Cox Story. I don't need anyone. I don't need anybody. <laughs> Oh. Hi again, master. Your parents. I just wanted to know whether they were proud of you. What do your parents think about your protest songs? Being human is a condition that requires a little anesthesia. King. Freddie Mercury's got to think about his whole <laughs> life before he gets on stage. Freddie, <laughs> Queen of Rocks. <laughs> Dark Knight, Logan, The Avengers, Deadpool, and Wonder Woman were overlooked for Best Picture and fans. Logan was describing that no comic book movies. Logan was bullshit that it was skipped over. It deserved it. Rabbit fans everywhere to say, I guess it was good, but was it that good? It was good. Pleasing you is there? I liked it. What? I liked it a lot. Third act looked like a PlayStation cutscene, and did it really pick up enough nominations to win? And I personally liked Infinity War better. Furthermore. From Yorgos Luffy. From Yorgos Although I did like Infinity War from just a little bit more. That's just me, though. Comes the other Queen biopic, nominated for Best Picture this year. That's also about a difficult, charismatic figurehead and the people who jockey for power around them, and features scenes of its eccentric, demanding main character surrounded by cute furry animals. I'm not gonna lie. Uh-huh. If this movie ended with Queen Anne performing at Live Aid, it'd have my vote. Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> From the mind brought you Jeff Daniels Chronic Diarrhea. Oh, that's right. One of the Farrelly brothers directed this. I think it was Peter Farrelly. Comes a film based on the personal stories of this guy. They were completely refuted by the living relatives of this guy. Dignity. That's true. 
as the civil rights era south is handled with as much subtlety as you'd expect from the guy who made Shadow Howe. Oh, there she is. There's Rosemary. Where? Right there. Is she behind the rhino? Featuring show-stopping turns from Mahershala Ali as Don Shirley and Theo Marshala? Peterson as one of the cartoon Italian chefs you see on the pizza box. Oh, no, but why are you breaking my balls? With the powerful message that racism, and stay with me on this, is bad. Whoa. Oh, For the I'm one millionth it. time. You see, 25th hour. You didn't? didn't? Okay. I did. See, Malcolm X. No? Really? Really? It was great in there. You should check it out. Malcolm X was awesome. The right thing. Oh, come yep. on. Stop rewatching the really? war for like a minute. Okay, let's start over. You've heard of Spike Lee. Yes, the guy at the next games. Now strapped in for a terrifying <laughs> portrait of white supremacy in the 70s. That's just as relevant today, which earned Spike Lee no, his it first isn't. director nomination. And really put Big problem with that. No, it isn't. People need to get off that wagon and move on with their lives. All right? The damper on reruns of that 70s show. God bless white America. Someone should really make this David Duke guy watch Green Book. Joanna Klan. From Adam McKay, who's a lot for an Oscar nomination. John Miles Clay, movie getting real! Lately comes the latest startling physical transformation from Christian Bale, who's been skinny, fat, and bad. In a Dick Cheney biopic, and fat one again. Part drama, one part comedy, and 18 parts makeup, with a powerful message that unchecked authority, abuse of power, and shady tactics, and stay with me on this, are bad. Dick. From first time <laughs> director Bradley Cooper comes a film that comes along once in a generation. Literally, like once in every generation since 1937. <laughs> Featuring New York born, <laughs> immensely talented, world famous pop star Lady Gaga. Every friggin' 30 the years, they gotta remake this damn film. Has California born, immensely talented, world famous pop star Ali. And featuring that one Lady Gaga duet you can't get out of your head, no matter how hard you try. Oh no, no! The other one! We all agree to get that one out of our head! Bad romance. <laughs> oh. From oh, Netflix, uh, that, the company that film was to sad. Its big boy pants comes a film that got Academy voters to wonder what it would be like if their housekeepers were actual people. In this intimate, sweeping, emotional portrait of 1970s Mexico, pulled straight from its director's brain, and stunningly realized through dazzling acting and cinematography that you skipped because it's so much easier just to rewatch The Office again. Bears, Beats, Battlestar Galactica. Tidying up with Yalitza Aparicio. Hmm. Starring the following Oscar snubs. It can be hard to be snubbed sometimes. Mr. Rogers, your documentary was the biggest snub this year. Oh, well, that's mighty nice of you to say, neighbor. Oh, didn't I'm get. Did, did, the, did that not get nominated for best documentary? Fuck the Oscars, dude. These other fine films getting there. Love Mr. Rogers, I'm sorry. Dude. But I would have been pleased as punch if they kept the awards for best makeup and hairstyling on TV. Or best editing. Or best cinematography. Oh, that one's important. Yes, it is. Can you say that? Cinematography. Very good. The Academy changed their mind, Mr. Rogers. Those awards are back in the show. Oh, did they change their mind about my film, too? No. Well, isn't that a kick in the patoot? But they could still give an award for best stunts. Tom yes, Cruise they could. His life at risk for your entertainment, isn't that? Special? And he also broke his ankle. Women made lovely films this year. Deborah Granick and Lynn Ramsey come to mind. I love movies about how important it is to protect children. Well, maybe not with a hammer, but you know. Oh, and of course, Tony Collette. I don't want to be a potty mouth, but that's messed up. Oh, excuse my language. No problem, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> it's a beautiful day on the internet when you're around. <clears throat> the Oscars 2019. Man, this is shaping up to be the worst Oscar since the La La Land debacle. Or since Crash War. Or since Franco and Hathaway hosted. Or since the Oscars were televised. Enchiladas. My battery is low and it's getting dark. I am the next Batman. Waffles are just pancakes with abs. Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch. 
God dang it. Oh, look at there. Nostalgia Critic did a Donnie Darko review. Well, that's one we're not going to be able to watch for a little while. I fucking love Donnie Darko. Oh, yeah. it <laughs> It's an interesting flick. I was that kid in high school that's like, fucking love Donnie Darko, and everybody's like, Fuck is Donnie Darko. You're weird. Go away from me. I remembered watching it, thinking it was one thing, and then I, I wound up just like sitting there just being like, damn, what the uh, hell is this? I had this? no idea what it was when I watched it. I just remember like getting recommendations from certain people to watch it. And so I was just like, all right, I'll check it out. And then I watched it, and I was just like, what the fuck did I just watch? And then I watched it again, and I was like, yeah, that's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. I had to watch it twice to fully understand it. Yeah, I watched it, and I gotta be honest, it uh, it took me by surprise just how how out there it was. But then when I actually understood what the hell was going on, and then the last twenty minutes of it, I'm just like, whoa, whoa, no! And then that was that. I'm just like, well, good God, man! It's like my buddy Chance says, though, it puts you in a weird mood when you watch it. Sometimes it does. So. It's very <laughs> odd. It's, vi I mean... It's like, there's no other movies I can think of like that. Um, except maybe, like, just... I don't even count it, but, like, when I watched uh, The Watchmen, I was just kind of in, like, a really, like, anxious place and, like, just all of the end of the world talking stuff. Lost and it Highway kind of has in a that... Weird mood. Lost Highway has yeah. that kind of feel. Have you Donnie, ever seen... Uh, no, I haven't, but Donnie Darko does it, like, every time, you know? It's just something about it. Also, emo Jake Gyllenhaal. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just go suck a fuck? Exactly how does one suck a fuck? <laughs> ducky, su ducky, fucky, give me a sucky. <laughs> yeah, that's a good movie, though. But yeah, like like I said, like probably three or four of those movies I had actually heard of. And the rest of them, I was like, what? What's that? <laughs> yeah. Well... I All liked Black nominated for best movie, and I'm just like, what the fuck even well, is that? I liked Black Panther. I was gonna go see Green Book with my mom, but she had to cancel because she got sick. Yeah, I don't know what Green Book was supposed to be. Uh, it's about a uh, Italian bodyguard who's hired by a uh, a uh, a jazz musician who who is who's African American to go throughout the American South during Jim Crow era during the Jim Crow era and play music at all of these venues and everything. And um, all these two men did actually exist, although the uh, there's <clears throat> the family of the jazz musician said, "Oh, they weren't friends; they were just acquaintances, and they just uh, they just got they just rode places together and talked about a few things, but they were nowhere near as friendly in real life as they were in the movie." So I don't know. Take that with a grain. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. Although. Uh, the guy, uh, the guy who uh, was the Italian, uh, the Italian bodyguard, he uh, like, like he swore up and down, like him and the doc actually had like long, fruitful conversations, because the doc was a very, because uh, he was a doctor as well, an honorary doctor of a uh, of music, because he he was just so good. Well, he uh, was actually a very articulate and a very well spoken man, and often helped uh, Tony, the uh, Italian guy. Uh, learn how to, uh, you know, learn how to uh, dictate better and learn how to properly express himself better. And it was actually really inter It's a really interesting story, but the fact that the family has refuted it, it's just it kind of casts a bit of doubt on it. Yeah. But that's just, <clears throat> yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, I also uh, let's see, let's go back and see what uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I watched it. Yeah, I wanted to watch it Kevin really Hall, bad, Hall. and I didn't get to go see it. Yeah. But let's I think see. it's out on DVD and Blu-ray now. I saw it the other day, so I need to check it out. Let's see. Also, The Black Klansman. I haven't seen it. Um, A Star is Born. My mom went and watched it and said it was very good all the way up until the ending. And then it got really depressing. And then uh, there was Vice, which... Honestly, I... I think Adam McKay is just convincing, trying to convince everyone that that uh, capitalism bad. Yeah. Because uh, look, I saw I saw uh, the big uh, the big short. Uh, the big short was about the uh, 
you know, the shorting, the shorting of the housing market that Wall Street did that pretty much almost bankrupted the entire country. And it was, it was a very, very good piece of storytelling. <clears throat> and uh, if you ask me, the people who should have gone to jail didn't go to jail. And honestly, I found them blaming a lot of the wrong people. But, eh, well. And then there's Roma, which I was not even aware of. Uh, I know it's a foreign film, uh, and it it's from uh, I believe from Mexico. Uh, the one about Queen Anne, I heard about, but I never I never got to see. So Black Klansmen, I've heard nothing but good things about. And plus, yeah, I only really heard about Bohemian Rhapsody, Vice, and Black Panther. So okay, the rest of them I hadn't even really heard about. Yeah, uh, Black Klansmen. I will say this: um, it's a lot of people are saying that Spike Lee is back up on, uh, you know, back up in creating good films again, because there was a time uh, throughout the early, uh, throughout the late '80s and early '90s, he was just like cranking out these awesome films, and he was. I mean, uh, Do the Right Thing, uh, Jungle Fever, uh, fucking uh, Malcolm X, uh, Get on the Bus. All of those are actually really good films. And then he sort of tapered off and started to, uh, and actually started to try and do other stuff. I'd say his last good film, uh, up until recently, was Inside Man. Did you ever watch it? Mm-hmm. It had Denzel Washington and Clive Owen. It supposedly, Clive Owen was he he start he starts the movie out by looking directly into the camera and saying, "Hi, my name is Dalton Russell, and I'm about to pull off the perfect bank robbery, and that, and I'm about to show you how." And turns out, throughout the entire film, you don't know who to trust, and you don't know what's going on, and it's actually really, really good. And uh, that was actually—I'd say that was actually Spike Lee's most successful, like mainstream esque film, because yeah, you know, had Denzel Washington, had a great, had a great cast, a great story, and then of course, uh, I think for me when he started making good films again was when he did Red Hook Summer because there was a lot of really good stuff in that and then he did Chirac which is about the uh, which is pretty you ever heard of the story Lysistrata? Hmm. Uh, it's an old Greek uh, old Greek story that the women of Greece denied their men sex until the wars were oh until they were done fighting in wars and it was actually hilarious and part of it's actually hilarious because at the end of it uh, the men have their men. The men are so like hard up that they actually, whenever they come out up on stage, they actually have these gigantic imaginary phalluses just like r- walking around. <laughs> they're walking around these giant. It's like, please, please, I'm begging you. And they're like, no, not until the fighting is done. And they're like, fine, the fighting is done. And they're like, okay. <laughs> and pretty much, Chirac is about. It's the same thing but with a more modern take on it in modern-day uh, Chicago. Hmm. And it's actually pretty good. And then he did Black Klansman, and they say, they're saying it's his best film since uh, since Malcolm X, in which I might have to give it a shot, although, you know, the modern-day connotations, the, the, the fact that people want to st- say that, oh, it's just as relevant now as it was then, I'm like, no. A couple of yahoos getting some torches together in Charlottesville and and causing a ruckus versus actual people going out and kidnapping people from their homes and lynching them in the middle of the night, there's a big fucking difference there. We have made tremendous strides in this country in terms of our relation, in terms of, in terms of uh, relations and all that, but people still want to pretend like it's as bad as ever, if not worse. Yeah. In which, it's, it's outrage. It's pure outrage. Here's the uh, thing, too. Um, didn't Infinity War come out last year? Uh, yes, it did. I don't want any of the brothers to come beat me up for saying this, but you should. You think Infinity, Infinity War, War should have is been Black way Panther? fucking better than Black Panther? Well, okay, that's that's a matter of opinion. Me, I love both films. I thought Black Panther was amazingly well done. Black Panther well was done. good, but it was not as good as Infinity War, in my opinion. And well, and that's and that's see, your opinion. And the thing that irked me about Black Panther is. The main character is the least interesting character in the movie. Everyone else in that movie made that movie. 
And true. That kind of that is, that like, is true. Well, it's not a best. It's his, not a best actor. Not his sister's dude. cooler than he is. The villain's cooler than he well, is. Well, yeah, Sherry and Killmonger. A are lot great of the characters. side characters are cooler than he is. Well, hell, even his uh, even uh, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, the the uh, Lupita uh, played by Lupita Nyong'o, uh, the the woman that he uh, was in love with. Yeah, she um, was a lot. She was very. It's it's Lupita Nyong'o playing her. I mean. She's a great actress all on her own. And it felt like, for some reason, I don't know if it was just the way it was edited or the pacing or something, but it felt like overall he had like 10 minutes of screen time in that whole movie. Who? Him, the dude that played the Black Panther. No, I felt he was on there for at least more than half of the film. It didn't feel like it to me. It felt like he barely got any action. Maybe it was because he was wearing the suit a lot. I don't know. Like, I don't think so. It just felt like there was not as much Black Panther happening as there was the other things in the movie happening. Well... It felt like, you know, the sister was the kick-ass one, not really him. It was like the sister was pretty much the one that made him... The superhero. Well, Sherry was. Well, Sherry is a genius. Yeah. All right, and she's in, in her own right. She is probably. I'd love to see a movie just about Sherry, honestly. And I'd also like to see a. Uh, I'd also like to see uh, also, uh, Dinah Gawiri. Uh, she was a lot more interesting than, uh, uh, you know, the head of the the head of the guard. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting these characters' names. My head, my head's spinning as is. Yeah, just yeah, remembering I'm all these characters. With names, so. Well, it's all the. Well, I remember the actors. I mean, the actors. I mean, that's. <laughs> but uh, and also, I I'm going to miss one specific character who died in that film. Killmonger was a great villain. He was. He was a mm-hmm. truly great villain. But to me, I'm going to miss uh, Ulysses Claw just a little bit more. Because Claw was just such a delightful jackass. Yeah. Like, he was just like, he's like, hold on, hold on. Look at this. And it's like, and he actually, like, makes it rain. He's like, always oh, wanted to do that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. See? He gets it. He gets how to be a bad, a, like, a, like, a, like a good traditional bad guy. And then you had Killmonger, who was just an outright, just a beast of a human, just take, you know, trying to take, uh, the thing the is, of Black it was Panther. difficult not to agree with him. So, well, I did. Well, like, yeah. Well, I do agree. He with was him. a really good villain because he seemed more realistic than just the classic like "fuck y'all, y'all, kill you all." And well, yeah, destroy the world. Type no, he villain, was a great know? villain. I, I will say, I I thought that his uh, his moral standpoint. He, I actually agreed with him in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, he came in. He came back to his home and found his father dead. And they didn't think to take him back with him. They didn't think to take him back with them to to help raise him because he didn't have anyone else. He just had himself. Mm. And being a young being a young a young boy in the inner city, I mean, he had to. I guarantee he had to deal with a lot of shit growing up. And he rose up and he became uh, he became a great warrior. Yeah. I mean, a, a superior <laughs> warrior in a lot of ways than T'Challa. It's easy. It's easy to like put yourself in the position of like, what if you went through all the same stuff? You'd probably be thinking kind of the same way that he was. Of course. So it well, was, it just made him hard to dislike or disagree well, with. So I know really somebody. Villain. I know somebody who actually, who has actually lost everything. Uh, he lost his. Uh, he lost his brother when he was eight. He lost his dad when he was fifteen, and he lost his mom when he was twenty-one. And he lost himself to drugs and actually spent a year in the, in the county jail because of uh, distribution. And now he's clean and he's actually doing very well for himself. And I honestly, I'm, I'm very happy that he turned his life around and he got himself back in order. And life can be a cruel, cruel bitch. All right, Life can be the cruelest mistress that any of us could ever know. Mm-hmm. The important thing is we do not let life beat us down. We rise above and we get better. That's what is important. And and you can't let the world change you. You can't let the world turn you into a terrible person because that op- that happens way too often. Yeah. And life is way too damn short to be pissed off all the time. I mean, yeah, I can say that all I want, but honestly... How a person leads their life is up to them. 
Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's I guess that's going to do it for this video. This was Honest Trailers, uh, the Oscars. So if you enjoyed what you've seen here, feel free to check out our uh, our other endeavors down below. And also don't forget to check out the original video. Uh, it is in the uh, link in the description. And I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And we will see you in the next one. Peace out. And Overlord should have won Best Sound Design.